Okie dokie. So I've got the crankshaft back and so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the main bearings on the crankshaft and and uh, I'll put the inner races on the crankshaft and then the outer races into the two crankcases. Then I'm going to assemble the cases dry uh, just to check my end float. Okay. Um, you should have about, I think it's about 15... 15 thou end float would be ideal um or there or thereabouts so um ideally i would have some dummy sort of bearings uh that i could put on um to check the end float but i don't have those so uh i'm afraid i'm gonna have to um, and my old bearings i sent the old main bearings off uh, to the engineers to see what they you know if they thought they needed replacing um and what they did is they just sent me back new bearings they didn't send the old bearings back um i could maybe have um ground out the internal face of the bearing so that it slid on the crankshaft a bit easier because the problem is of course if the end float is wrong then i've got to take the crankshaft out which i have to do anyway but I've got to take these inner races back off, which will obviously be on tight um, to to add shims and so on. So um, ideally, I could have done with the old bearings and use them as, as dummies to, to check the end float, but we can't. So I'm hoping that the end float will be right. So I will be putting the inner races and the crankcases. I'll heat them up in the barbie a bit to get them warm so they expand. So these will expand to take the outer uh, bearing and these will expand so they'll slip over the crankshaft in the meantime there's a dear old washing machine for those of you who remember those things uh, in the freezer I've got the outer bearings in the freezer and I've got the crankshaft in the freezer because that will then um, shrink just one thing to note um, is that the bearings i don't know if this will focus well enough um, yeah they have serial numbers and the serial numbers are slightly different on each bearing one one ends four five i can't see if i can find it on here this is the lights wrong and one ends uh, 50 there you go and that's the same with the inner races in other words the bearings are sort of made and paired up with each other so i'm going to make sure that the same bearing goes the same inner see that's four or five if it will if it'll focus come on do me a favor and focus yeah and the, this one will be this one i'll end in 50. yeah so um i'm assuming that the bearing you know i don't want to mix them up okay so i'll get everything sorted and then we'll get the inner races on the outer races in there put the crankcase together and check the actual end float on the crankshaft so here we are out in the snow uh but we've got the barbie on and i'm just gonna heat these up not doing too hot uh probably do them up about 150 something like that just get them warm and hopefully the bearings will slide on and slide in and uh, and hopefully in a minute this snow will obviously melt off and i'll be able to see the temperature gauge which is under under there somewhere okay there we go i've actually uh taken it up to about 200 degrees as you can probably see from melting snow uh, so that's well warm enough so i'm going to take the inner races out to begin with i'll turn the barbie off and i'll take the inner races out take them down see if we can get them on the crankshaft which is the hard bit then i'll probably reheat those uh, cases come back up and to do the outer bearings it's getting those inner races on that's the problem on the crankshaft okay put the crankshaft out the freezer put it upside down on the wood blocks on the bench and we'll see if we can get this bearing or decide to go on it at all for us. Probably not.
vale? paint off there. But okay that's on. Let's hope to God we don't have to take it off again. You can hear it going home. Do the time in sight. Hopefully this will be easier. Famous last words. And the problem with this side is that it's very you have to make sure it's dead straight going on. There's no lead. Yeah. It immediately feels easier. <laughs> Probably won't be. It immediately feels it. <laughs> Have to make sure I get rid of all that paint. Okay, the inner races are on the crankshaft, so I can put that aside now. Although I'm hoping to God I don't have to take them off again. You see. And uh, right, we'll go and uh, we'll go and heat up the uh, yeah, we'll go and heat up the cases. Just give them another little blast and then we'll come and we'll get the uh, outer races in the uh, in the cases oh. yeah so 50 is on the timing side make sure we get the bearings around the right way okay okay uh let's have a look yeah so we've heated up the drive side we've got the drive side bearing which is 545 and we need to fit it with the lettering facing outwards so downwards in our case Hopefully this will pop in. <laughs> if we get it in there you go, look at that. It's just dropped. It's actually dropped straight in, which is, that's really what it should do. I'll make sure when, uh, when it's cooled down, I'll make sure that's nice and tight. Otherwise we'll take it back out and we'll put some bearing seal on. But um, I'm fairly sure when that, when everything cools down, that'll be nice and tight. It's already, uh, it's already tightened up. Just by the bearing, you know, the bearing heating up and the area around it cooling down. So, uh, yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay, we'll go and, uh, and get the other one. That's more like fitting a bearing. <laughs> Slots in. That's what we like. And then we have the timing side bearing. And again, lettering facing outwards and let's see if this one will drop in as well you never know your luck thinking about it nearly try and get it in now Again, we'll leave them to cool down and just check that the bearings are, are uh, you know, they're not going to fall out. That they, are, that they are in nice and tight. And then when they cool down a bit, and I've checked that, then we'll dry assemble the crank, shaft, crank case halves with the crank shaft in the middle and check for the end float and keep fingers crossed that we're, we're okay. Otherwise, I'll have to take the in. What we'll have to do is, if we haven't got the correct end float, there are shims that go behind the uh, inner races. So we'll have to take the races back off, and you probably have to take both off because you want to put you want 
shims either side, you know, to get the crankshaft in the middle, not loads of shims on one side. Uh, so I wouldn't be looking forward to taking those off again, but hey, if we have to, we have to. Um, but hopefully we won't. So I'll clean everything up. I'll make sure that we haven't got any uh, bits left over, you know, everything's clean. And then we'll assemble, keep fingers crossed. Right, uh, just before we get on with the assembly, uh, one thing I kind of forgot to mention before is that I've gone through these, uh, uh, I've gone through the crankcases and I've washed them and I've washed them and I've cleaned them and I've made sure that any last trace whatsoever of the, of the blast medium from the, because we've had them blast cleaned and that stuff can get everywhere, especially when there's traces of old oil, it'll stick to that. So all down within the uh, oilways here, you've got little oilways going into the um, the camshaft bearings. So it's clean and clean and clean and blasted out with um, air and then run through with uh, uh, brushes, you know, uh, so you know, get rid of any gunge and in particular any blast that's left over, any blast, uh, you know, little bits of metal from the blasting or sand. It's like sand that they use. Because obviously if that's left in the engine, it'll just wreck it straight away. Uh, then I've gone through and I've run a tap down every single thread in all of the cases. And there's a lot of them. Uh, and for the for the block and uh, um, in, the, uh, in the bottom of the crank cases, Okay, so every thread I've run a tap down. I've also, I've even checked taps there. At these, where the studs are on the top, these are actually helicoiled. Okay, from in the factory. Uh, and they're helicoiled. Yeah, most of the sort of big, um, uh, you know, the threads are, uh, were helicoiled in the factory. Because I think they discovered basically that a helicoil, although, come on, focus your thing. Come on, your thing, where are you? I don't know where the, there we are. Because the, the, the factory discovered that a helicoil, oh yeah, and, the, and I've done the threads there where the uh, taco goes on. You know, so all the threads have been checked. And yeah, as I was saying, so the factory discovered that helicoil is actually stronger than the original metal. So where there's a lot of tension, they actually helicoiled them in the factory. And what I did was, I've also run a tap down. I can't go to focus properly. I've run a tap down the, uh, uh, the even the helicoils to make sure there's no grit in that. In obviously, it's not really cutting them, but it's just cleaning out the threads to make sure there's no grit and stuff. So when you come to tighten things up and torque things down, you're getting a correct torque, and also you know you're you're not going to damage the threads, etc. So I've done all that. Then I've scrupulously cleaned all the mating surfaces, which even with blast cleaning, it doesn't always come off. So I just mentioned, you know, that all that prep has been done before we even get to this point. Okay, it's very, very important that everything's scrupulously clean. I've checked the bushes, out, uh, the, the camshaft bushes, I, I'm, I think they're fine. Um, so, yeah, about I haven't done, about the only threads I've not done are these two, because I can't get, um, I can't get a tap on them. I ran tap, um, a dies rather. I run a die down all of the cylinder head, uh, cylinder base studs, which will help us when we put the barrel on. It will help us. We can just spin the nuts down. If they if they don't run down the threads properly, then you have to put a spanner on and like do half a turn. You know, it takes about four hours. So it's good to have these. Well, obviously you want the threads solid anyway, but nice and clean. Then the nuts will actually run down when you come to put the barrels on. Yeah, uh, and obviously, and, and also running the taps down helps you just to double check that there's no threads that are damaged because obviously now is the time to repair things if they are. And on the these crankcases, I didn't find any damaged threads. Uh, yeah, I think on the, uh, yeah, but there's, I don't know, there's an awful lot of threads when you start looking around, but I've, I've done them all. Oh, yeah. And uh, also, on the, uh, you, you can change, I think you can the oil return um, from you know, back to the oil pump it's, it's based here at the front of the engine and apparently under hard acceleration um, the oil can go to the back of the uh, 
Oh, get this right. No, sorry, uh, sorry. No, it's at the, it's at the back of the engine. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, get it right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, not so not on the hard acceleration, but um, anyway, you can get like uh, the oil can not go back to, to return. So there is a way of moving it to the front, but to be honest. Unless I think you're racing and going mad on the bike, I really don't think it's that necessary. But, you know, it's, it's an option if you want to do it. It's a bit of faffing about and getting rid of this, um, getting rid of this uh, little land here. Um, yeah, but I, I, think, I think it's fine as standard. If you're only going to be pottering around on a Sunday, you know, the old quick blast here and there you know thrashing it around the racetrack mile after mile i think they'll be fine okay uh i think that's everything regarding the crankcases so what we're going to do now is we're going to assemble them without the camshaft just so i can check the end flute and we'll have fingers crossed that uh, everything's okay okie doke so i've uh, got the drive side uh, crankcase there so we'll lower the uh Carefully lower in the crankshaft. In the bearing, jolly good. Uh, and then we've got the timing side, which we shall pop over. Obviously, without the camshaft, I'm just dry assembling them for now. Okay, that's the uh, they're uh, loosely assembled now. And what I'll do is I'll put um, I'll put a few of the um, crankcase uh, bolts in, and uh, because obviously otherwise we'll get a false reading. Uh, and then we'll, we'll try it from there. 